Hey everybody, let's play some Crusader Kings 3. I picked the start in the uh, Holy Roman Empire for this. Um, I did play a little bit in Sicily and uh, dabbled a bit in France. Um, looked at the starting dates and uh, I found an interesting task. And with my limited CK2 experience and uh, my couple of hours that I stuck into this game, I thought it might be might be enough of a training and of a skill to uh, bring the famous house of Habsburg to glory, um, which originally I think is based in uh, in Austria, and from there uh, had many a uh, kingdom in uh, in Germany. Uh, they had rulers even in Spain, and they were dominant dominant force. Uh, I think they still exist up until this day, um, and had like the six or seven times were the uh, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and is from the Habsburg dynasty. Uh, yeah, they were quite a powerful, very important house in uh, Central Europe. So, and uh, that's the one good thing about them. The second great thing about them is um, they start out as a very, very small county and a very small dynasty. In fact, you could not even call it a dynasty. It's more like a family that they start out with. Um, it's just me, a 41 year old and his uh, his sister and uh, then my son and my daughter that's it just a little a little family the sister hanging around helping us um, she might actually become our spy master she might actually be already she indeed is not why isn't she can't I put my sister in here why can't I put in my sister? Eh? What's the problem? Oh, she isn't in our court, probably, right? Yep. She isn't in our court. That's too bad. Uh, where are you? Really? She's married to Count Ulrich of Bern. Who is? Ooh. Want to be my vassal? You want to be my my my? Marshal, because I'm actually <laughs> just realizing I do lack a marshal. Huh? You want to come here? Be a little vassal? Huh? Don't even have the option to ask that. So I guess we'll have to take it by force. And I will cease with the Bill Cosby jokes at this point, even though I didn't even start yet. And Burn is our immediate neighbor, so uh, that that might be a good point to start expanding the empire. But one thing after the other. Number one, um, I'm gonna set up my plans and ambitions and whatnot in uh, this first episode. So those of you who just want to see gameplay, who just want to see things getting done, um, you might either just move ahead 10 minutes or so, or uh, wait for episode number two, where I'll just be in the middle of gameplay, probably. And uh, this being CK3 and everything, you'll just pick up what I did pretty fast anyway. Um, the second reason is that uh, I've been away from YouTube for over two years now, and uh, the first people seeing this video is probably some of my followers uh, from my previous, well, active time on YouTube, and uh, just sometimes checking in if there's some more content, because I know I've done that with a couple channels that come back to life from the dead. And um, so those of you who do that, and those of you who are the ones seeing this video, and uh, hi, welcome back. Um, and Thank you so much for, for hanging around and for not um, calling me all kinds of swear names and uh, pressuring me for uh, just vanishing from YouTube. I just got a couple of very friendly requests, uh, if I could give a life sign, if I, you know, what's up, what's happening. Um, but nobody really poked and prodded, which I really appreciate, because I had a couple, uh, what do you call, trying times uh, the last year and a half, uh, maybe the last two years. Um, yeah, so maybe you guys um, might tell me what, like, how you want to learn about that. Is I uh, should I just make a video, talk a bit why I um, was away from YouTube so long? Um, you want to get into it in the comments, just ask me a couple questions. Um, I'll collect them and either make a video or post the answers, or I just tell some stories here and there throughout my let's plays, and we just let bygones be bygones. You guys be the judge of that. I'm open for anything. Um, I'm just happy I found some energy, some time, um, some ambition to do YouTube again and I found a game, just the game actually, to do it with CK3. So that much for this part of the story. Um, I think 
for my part, that's that's enough. Um, you guys just just lead me on what what you want to know, and I'll as much as possible will answer it. Um, and yeah, before you ask in the comments, the color of my underwear is gray. So now we have that out of the way, because that's gonna be the first question as always. Anyway, um, so we are the Count Werner of Argau. Another nice thing is that we're uh, not a nice thing is that we are in the middle of uh, Germany <clears throat> or what is to become Germany actually so I'm actually able to pronounce the names wow which uh, kind of kept me from playing France because uh, those names well they are not the easiest to pronounce if you don't speak uh, the French language good okay so let's get through the uh, setup first now my plan is um, since we are in the Holy Roman Empire um, stay in there for a while. I mean, not that we have a choice currently, but uh, we want to kind of stay protected under the um, umbrella of the Holy Roman Empire, so France can't attack us, um, Tuscany or whatever parts of Italy, Croatia, Hungary, whoever might get hungry for our territory once we um, we expand a little bit, because they'll be actually messing with the Emperor, and the Emperor is, uh, well, he's decently strong, and he'll get a lot stronger fast. So that is that works to our advantage. And we do have a couple easy targets, actually just a couple. Uh, we have Bern and uh, Neuchâtel. And that's pretty much it. Maybe St. Gallen might be a target. Uh, I would love to have Zürich in my in my domain. Um, so these Sundgau, Zürich, uh, Bern, like these um, counties around us here are going to be the first that we're going to take on without any major competition, I guess. Um, well, we have to take Zurich from Swabia, which is, by the way, where I live currently, so <laughs> in real life. Um, and they also are, well, not that powerful, but they have quite a large domain, so I'm assuming they're going to get a lot more powerful quickly. So we'll see how we can finagle that. Maybe they get split up a bit, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll just see. Time's gonna work in our favor anyway. So the first target's gonna be Bern and Neuchâtel, and then I think, uh, even though historically Habsburg is based in Austria, we're just gonna try and get the territory of what today is Switzerland under our belt, and uh, take it from there. Maybe Piemont, uh, even though that's not really an attractive territory, because it's most, mostly poor mountain regions. Uh, easy to defend though, probably. Yeah, level 4 castle, high in the mountains, welcome. Level 2, yeah, yeah that, that that might be doable, but we don't gain that much from it. Just a foothold in Italy, or what's to become Italy anyway. So we'll see after the first. And from there, actually, I'm just open for anything. Um, maybe we can get a nice position in the uh, Holy Roman Empire's court, or in the Emperor's court, rather. And to that extent, that's going to be our first... Our first action. Uh, we do have a an okay spy master. So what I want to do, um, since I'm pretty sure nobody's going to plot against us at this point, what I want to do with her is uh, try and find some secrets on Emperor Heinrich. Um, actually, we could pick any of those, and it's always going to be find secrets in Emperor Heinrich of the Holy Roman Empire's court. So I guess this here is his core territory. And uh, we will just go to uh, Klingenberg. Just go here. That's currently where it's located. Ideally, we'll get a weak or a good, like a, just a regular hook, weak hook, or even a strong one on him. Find out an affair. Something like that. Uh, he is callous. He is paranoid. And he's cynical. Hmm. Not really the affair type. And he's very young, still 16. Has a young wife. So I guess that'll serve his uh, his needs in that regard for quite a while. Um, but maybe we can find... Uh, his court is a lot bigger than ours. And uh, maybe we can find some, some nice secrets out here. Yeah, so that's going to be the task for the Spy Master. And from there we'll try and get some leverage on Monsignore Emperor. Now, um, our Countess... Yeah, she's not the greatest doesn't have that many talents. I think she'll just go with the assist ruler. Um, gives us plus one in anything, plus two in intrigue. That should do nicely. Um, 
You don't really need any specific support. Court Intrigue, she would give a big bonus on that, but it's not really, not really necessary. So we're just going to go with the Assist Ruler. Um, our Bishop doesn't really like us that much, so maybe we'll just go with a Swaying. 62%. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. Why not? Because uh, while he doesn't like us, we don't get any... Well, if this pop-up will... We don't get any levies from him. Uh, yeah, your Realm Priest does not endorse you. No effects. So uh, no levies, no tax. Um, so if he does like us, he will endorse us and thus give us levy and tax. Now, uh, our Chancellor... Let's see. Um, we don't have the biggest court... Well, actually, don't we have a tap? Yeah, we have a tap for the court here. Um, and most of them... We're in pretty good terms. Yeah, we have one young courtier that doesn't really like us that much. But other than that, we do... We have a guest, Leopold. What's your... Okay, he can fight, but not great. Um, what would you want? He would ask 10 to be recruited to court, but, like, he's pretty useless. Um, he could be a knight, but he's already 37, so he won't improve that much more, and he doesn't have any other talent, so... Chast, shy, sadistic. Not really. You can be a guest and then be on your merry way home after you finish being a guest. Okay, so I think we're gonna stick with foreign affairs, um, just have a people around us like us a little bit more. Um, domestic doesn't really seem worth it. Um, but first of all, we do need a marshal. That is imperative. So who are we going to go with? Oh, we have Monsieur... Uh, what? Gautzelin? <laughs> is that... What nation are you? Catholic Swabian. So him being German, you would say Gautzelin. That is the weirdest name I ever would. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna switch him from being steward to being marshal. And probably we're gonna switch our... No, we're not. We just don't have a... Uh... Yeah, we don't really have a steward, so we're just gonna leave it at that for now. I don't know if I got unlucky with the start. If that's normal, that you have a... I never, my, my first start, I always had a full court. And uh, mostly decent people, too. So, yeah. Anyway, so now we have a marshal. And uh, the marshal's gonna be training commanders, because he does give us a nice chance of 6.3% of finding a new commander. And uh, new commanders would be knights that could improve our army quality. Which I would like quite a bit. And uh, steward position is open. That one we got. We got secrets. Okay. We're pretty much golden, I think. Um, and one nice thing about the bishop, too, is that he has a learning of 15, so he's rather competent as his job. Um, so we could gain some claims on the territories next to us. Because we don't have many claims, I don't think. Yeah, not really. Where are those, anyway? County of... Brie, Brie, um, it's quite a bit up there. We have the county of Bar, that's also in here, and we have a county on the whole, on the Duchy of Upper Lorraine. Well, that could be a midterm goal. Though currently the Duchy holder is a fellow vassal. Pretty great martial leader. So, yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. We might ally them for a while, but um, another thing I wanna do is I don't always wanna min max the game, like just be the most efficient. Um, as we play through this in a good Crusader Kings fashion, there's gonna be stories and bonds that develop, there's gonna be characters that do a lot for us. And uh, I want to kind of make sensible decisions in that sense, in a role-playing sense. Um, also, uh, give a bit of credit to the attributes that our character has. So he's deceitful, which plays much to my nature, because that is min-maxing, actually. Um, but he's also just and ambitious. 
So we're going to go for options that reflect these character traits um, if we get the chance. Um, and he's a tough soldier, which is kind of nice. That leads us to our next order of business. We do need to pick a lifestyle. So for a tough soldier, yeah, he's going to be... Um, He's going to be picking the martial trait. I do want to... I'm not going to um, always pick the martial trait. It's just for the start. It's easy for him. It seems like a very obvious choice. And it's very straightforward with its bonuses. For the things we have planned currently, those are um, especially useful. But uh, I definitely want to learn about the other lifestyles throughout this playthrough. So, uh, But we're going to start out with the martial one. And he does have a maxed out strategist tree. Wow. That is... That I... Well, that's a nice... <laughs> that's a nice gift. Thank you, game, uh, for not giving me uh, somebody who can be a steward. But at least we got this. That's pretty good, because that's the tree that I would have maxed out myself, actually. Um, and right after, we're going to go with the overseer. Because we do want to conquer territory. Like, this helps us fight better, um, siege faster... Um, we have just stronger men in general. And if we go to the strategist trait, which is going to be the next one we can pick up, we get extra martial, extra diplomacy, more enemy fatal casualties. It's just awesome overall. Um, the next very useful one is the overseer. And for gallant, which is more kind of a King Arthur uh, knight type, I think we need to have the character, like the chivalry focus doesn't really sit with our uh, current Duke Werner, I don't think. So he's a strategist. We're going to go with the strategy focus as well. Might shift it down the line, but currently I like the plus three Marshall. It does fit what he's already good at, so let us go with that. So now we made the lifestyle choice. We can't fulfill the empty council position. Um, let's see. Are you a member of any factions? Nope. But there's a very strong independence faction in the Empire which uh, has anybody who is anybody in it. Um, Bohemia, Tuscany, really? Is Tuscany part of the... It is. Wow, okay. I always thought the uh, own empire extended to here, but yeah, Tuscany is still still part of the Roman Empire. That is interesting. Um, and they want to be independent, obviously, because there's pretty big... Steiermark... Duchy of Lombardy, that's our neighbor here, which we wouldn't mind being independent. Duchy of Bavaria, yeah, so if all those say, hey guy, we want to, hang on, why are we in here? I don't want to be independent. Can I leave the faction? I can. Who are we going to upset? Hmm. Ah, that's a kind of that's a position. I, I'll postpone that a little bit. I have to hem and haw about that for five minutes. But I don't think it's beneficial to leave the empire right away. I don't think that's a good plan. Anyway, so uh, we got that. We got intrigue. We're swaying our little bishop. Um, there are decisions we could do right away. Uh, we could invite knights and uh, spend prestige on it. We could go, whoopsie, we could go on a pilgrimage. Um, the problem is those only require prestige in the first um, in the first step in actually organizing it, but then the second step they require quite a bit of money. I think the pilgrimage it's like the cheapest you can go to if we go up here to Cologne um, would be 50 or 60 uh, gold and from there it goes to 100 120 or so um, and the knights if they're half decent cost at least 20 to recruit so it's like we only have 20 and we're making 1.7 a month so not really an option currently um, i'm also gonna wait a little bit and uh, just save up a bit of cash so we can actually you are now the leader of the faction of independence against emperor heinrich the fourth I not only I don't want to be in there, why am I leading it? What kind of sense does that make? How is that? Well, the good thing about it is we are the ones who can decide when we're going to press the demands and when we are not. So, uh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, 
I don't I don't understand at all why I should be the one leading that faction actually. Um, I think I'm the weakest member in there uh, between the likes of Tuscany and Lombardy um, and Bavaria. It's ridiculous I should be the one. But I'll take it. I'll uh, like to postpone that decision anyway. Uh, now another thing we have to address is that... Oh yeah, that's just... Venice would also be an interesting start. Hmm. That would be a very interesting start. Anyway, um, another thing we have to address, and I'm going to pause again for that, are our kids. Um, we do have an heir, which is great. He's six years old. He is also of the martial focus. Um, and he's going to be... Actually, he just picked the martial focus. So, uh, which is okay. We're going to leave him with that. He... Let's see what we can do. I love that, actually, the kids... It's like these attributes are random, right? And then you get... Um, a few stronger ones, like in his case, stewardship and uh, marshal. And you can then pick your education, which I really, really appreciate. Um, that it's like there, there's a bit of a random factor. You can't just min max. I mean, you can technically still do it, and you can also pick one of the other ones. Um, but it's like you can follow your talents, and there's going to be maybe some strong talents, and maybe even in your in your dynasty, in your house. Um, so that most members are going to be good at those, weak at others. It's like, yeah, you really, uh, really build up a family that has a distinct characteristic and story, not just, not just some min-maxed random characters. Anyway, um, so we do need to find a spouse for him, and we're in a bit of a predicament. We do certainly need allies to be able to take on any of our neighbors, um, but we also want to have uh, just a good spouse like one that fits us one i like one that has uh, that's maybe has a good attribute like she's beautiful or she's smart or she's a good schemer or something that she can bring to help our little family become more powerful more capable um, not only an alliance um, and for alliances usually you marry off your daughters which we only have one of and i don't think there's going to be any more coming our wife is 39 um, we might just try and we did have uh, we did have a young courtier, no? Uh, where is that? This one, Ingel Trude. We might actually just try and romance her a little bit. That would be that would be possible. Hmm. And get some daughters that way. I don't know. We'll see. Could also cause problems, um, of course. And uh, could cause, like, if it gets discovered, then we have a bastard that also has claims. And uh, then there's a whole drama in that direction. So I'm not sure if I want to go down that road. But it is it is an option. Either way. Okay. So now we got... Um, we got Ida von Habsburg, though. So we can, we can marry her off for an alliance. Let's see what we get right off the bat. Um, we do want an alliance. Let's sort it by power. Um, we do want an alliance that's rather close to us. Uh, an ally, rather, that's close to us and not somewhere in the hinterlands. Oh, we get Besançon. That is actually interesting. They have a thousand men. That's pretty good. Um, theologian, insightful thinker. He doesn't like us too much, but that would change, of course, with a marriage. Um, the whole court doesn't like us too much, actually. <laughs> but that's okay. They're gonna learn to love us soon enough. Um, that actually seems like the best deal. Um, we could try and find some member of Upper Lorraine. They are even stronger, but eventually we want to fight those guys. Um, but let's see. You are currently unmarried. What would you say to marry our a daughter in due time? No, they won't accept. She will be marrying down. Um, yeah, that's the problem because we're not a duke. So everybody who is will be having that minus 40. Aside from that, they would agree though. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. But I think we're gonna take that alliance with Besançon just makes sense I mean there are immediate neighbors right here so any war we have with these little territories here they can immediately come to our aid 
yeah, it just makes a lot of sense. Who else we have? Hua, Vladimir, whatever. Cagliari. Yeah, it's in Italy somewhere. If I could only find it. Where is that? Oh, here, yeah, on the island, yeah. There's my good geography skills showing. Uh, so until they can reach us, first of all, it's going to cost them money to ship their troops onto land. Then they have to ship their troops. Then they have to walk all the way up here through the mountains, and then they can support us. By that time, our army is beaten, grilled, and sold off to the highest bidder. So I think Bessal saw is just awesome. Um, would have loved Lombardy even more. Oh, they're even weaker. Or well, Provence, maybe? They're also weaker. Why are you weaker? Okie do, based on song it is. Um, who of those we want? Matrilinear? Oh, they almost accepted. Hang on. Um, what's the second one? No, not by relevance. I wanted alliance power. Etienne? No, okay. Yeah, that would be weird. I mean, do we have a matrilinear that is strong? Yeah, Cagliari, they would accept. Monferrato, Hamelburg, yeah, just some obscure. Okay, okay, okay. So, we do have Etienne, who is a zero-year-old. Our daughter is two. Yeah, I think we'll probably go with the older one. Go with Guy Divra. Divre? Divre, I think. There we go. Send the proposal. Um, Guy won't get any prestige. Ida will get 200 prestige. And we get our first ally. Great. That is that done. Um, now we also need somebody to educate our dear heir, Otto von Habsburg. And uh, the route I want to take here is... I don't really want to trade him for favor. I mean, we can look at the emperor. Yeah, he's pretty skilled at intrigue. Hmm, but that's about it. How about your spouse? Yeah, she's not that great overall. Um, yeah, what I want to, the route I want to go with him is that we want to look at some of our neighbors, our bigger neighbors, maybe like Bavaria, for example. We won't be messing with you anytime soon. Um, and then see if we don't have anybody here. I don't have kids yet, so maybe who else? How about Tuscany? Who do you have? They don't have any children. Okay. How about Provence? You just have one kid. You're not the most skilled yourself. Hmm. How about we go to France? To lose Burgundy. Huh. He's a pretty skilled steward. That might be a thing. Um, so I want to find a good teacher that still... It won't be wasted that we... Uh, we still want good relations, right? On the border with France. That is good. Um, but I also want somebody who can really teach our kid some skills, right? I don't want to just have uh, have him educated and for for the um, approval bonus or for the, uh, for the opinion bonus. Um, I do want to learn. And now... The min-max way to go about it would be we go to the find character, um, we sort this one by martial skill, and there we go. Ooh, hang on. That actually might work out <laughs> quite great. Um, and then we go for the one with the highest value, I was about to say. Um, but... Bohemia. That is actually... That is actually not the stupidest idea. To get on good on the good side of the Duke of Bohemia. He's a really skilled tactician. Very skilled tactician. Um, he has a level 3 in that one. He doesn't hate us really. Um, he is a powerful neighbor. He is currently in the Roman Empire. Yeah, that actually might be the way to go. How about you educate our... Well, let, let's first see who else we have. Let's not just jump on the first opportunity, but that that makes a lot of sense uh, for me in, in both terms. We have one that is probably renowned for his skill, 
So we're going to send our heir to him for training. Um, and it's also important for us diplomatically to be on this guy's good side, right? So that is a that is an interesting option. Bren, yeah, Neuchatel. That's great. Our immediate neighbor is a military genius. Thank you, game. That is <laughs> that's just awesome. Uh, Upper Lorraine, yeah, he's also a military genius. Well, ain't that sweet. Bern, really? What did I say our targets are? Neuchâtel, Marshal 21. Bern, Marshal 20. Upper Lorraine, where we have claims, Marshal 20. Ah, just kill me now. Duke Atakov, Steiermark. Okay, so for military education, actually Duke Vratislav of Bohemia would be an awesome option. For stewardship education, um, there isn't really... Where are you? Haus Schlegel. Where's Haus Schlegel? I don't know. I had a friend in school who was called Schlegel, but... Count Thiemo of Munich. Okay, that would be Haus Formbach. That would be also possible, but he's a count, and yeah, yeah, no, let's let's go with the original first, with the Duke Vratislav of Bohemia. That makes so much sense. Good, and there we go. Now we found the teacher of our kid. Good day, sir. Would you like a ward? My son and heir, and you'll be the one. They would convert Otto to Czech culture. Uh, certainly not. But uh, you just go over there, become the ward. Um, I just hope nobody will capture our son. Like they don't have too many wars. Um, or pick their wars wisely. There we go. Send that proposal. Nice. Okay, so we got that sorted out. Um, with the marriage, I'm going to wait. Because we want to go a similar route with our heir. Um, like I said, we want the wife to have some skills. But we also want somebody who's either a neighbor or... Uh, potential future ally once we eat our way through a couple of these territories here good uh, let's have those approvals come through alliance formed with count Gilom. very good gladly accept patrol proposition that is nice alliance formed good um, and then we also should get notice of him accepting Duke of Bohemia accepting our ward. Any second now? Did he already? Located in Praha. Oh yeah, he's already there. Huh, I thought I would just get a notice. Or did I click it away? I don't know. Maybe I slept on the job. Okay, now let's see. We are not endorsed, but we're currently working on that. We have few knights. Can't do anything about that. We can declare war. Yeah, sure. Maybe in the next life. Um, and there's election in the Holy Roman Empire, which we are not a part of. And the suggestion is let's uh, sway Emperor Heinrich, but yeah, we're going to have to find another way. Hopefully we're going to find some hooks on him through our spies. Anyway, this episode has been going on quite a while now, and I think I laid out my plans rather clearly. So uh, soon enough, we'll start pressing some claims and taking some territory and start the game rolling. For now, this is going to do it. I think we're set up for success so far. And uh, next episode, we can uh, ruin all that because the game has a way to mess with you that is both awesome to uh, and entertaining to fight against, but sometimes it's really cruel and heartbreaking. Uh, but we'll see which one it is. You guys, thank you so much again for watching, for your, uh, I guess, patience, waiting for a video for that long time. And uh, just have an awesome day and see you around in the next episode.